On July 1877, in Martinsburg, West Virginia, railroad workers striked against the Baltimore, Ohio Railroad. The Great Railroad Strike of 1877 was the country's first major rail strike and witnessed the first general strike in the nation's history. The strike was an angry response to wage reductions, job cuts, profiteering by the huge railroad corporations. Forty disgruntled locomotive firemen walked off the job and by the end of the day workers blockade freight trains near Baltimore allowing only passenger traffic to get through. Local military sympathized with the workers and chose not to fight against them. So the governor called in the National Guard troops. It was a short strike but it helped set the stage for the next strikes. May 4th, 1886, the Chicago Haymarket uh, Square turned into a riot. Labor pro protesters were fighting for such rights like an eight hour workday. Some labor protesters threw bombs at policemen and they responded by firing into the crowd at random. At least eight people died and eight labor activists were convicted with the bombing. Despite the lack of evidence, one was sentenced to five years of prison, four men were hanged and three killed. in Homestead, Pennsylvania, many workers were going against the Carnegie Steel Plant. Carnegie wanted to break the union contract of three years from the 1889 strike with the AAIS workers. Henry Clay Frick stepped up production demands and the union refused the new conditions. Workers were being replaced by scabs when the workers went on strike and began locking out workers from the plant. When the Pinkerton Army arrived to the Manogalia River, the strikers warned them not to step off the barge, but they did so anyway. No one knows which side shot first, but the gunfire was exchanged for 14 hours. The Pinkerton retreated and the strikers had won, but were charged with treason. Carnegie successfully swept unions out of Homestead. On 11, 1894 through July 20th, 1994, workers striked against the Pullman Company in Pullman, Illinois, on the outskirts of Chicago. The Pullman Palace Car Company cut the already low wages of its workers by about 25%, but didn't reduce workers' rents, other charges at Pullman. 260 workers joined the boycott. Riots broke out when troops were sent in to stop the strike on July 3rd. Four to 30 people were killed with many other wounded. The Pullman Company reopened August 2nd and agreed to rehire the striking workers on the condition that they sign a pledge never to join another union.